My name is Kirti Jain and I have a biology faculty here. We are going to study today about the deviations from the Mendel law. So, the first type of deviation that we will be discussing today is pleiotropy. What is pleiotropy? According to Mendel's law of unit factor, a single character is controlled by a single factor. Now what we call it as genes. But there are certain genes which controls the expression of multiple characters. So when a single gene controls the expression of multiple characters, the phenomenon is said to be pleiotropy. So what is pleiotropy? Single gene controlling the expression of multiple characters it is called as pleiotropy so one of the examples of pleiotropy is sickle cell anemia so we have sickle cell anemia in short it is also called as sca it is an autosomal recessive disorder. The genes for this are present on chromosome number 11. And this particular genes are controlled by a set of two alleles. We have HBA and HBS. HBA codes for normal DNA where it produces normal beta globin chain while hbs is the result of mutation mutated dna which produces abnormal beta globin chain so there are basically three forms of the alleles being present here which are the three forms we have hba hba this codes for a normal individual we have hba hbs which is called codes for sickle cell trait. It's actually also an incompletely dominant form. And the most dangerous form or the lethal form is HBS. HBS, the completely recessive form, which codes for sickle cell anemia. Now, this disease is very common among the African population. The mutation is quite common there. And because of this, they generally suffer from the problem of uptake of oxygen. So there is reduction, reduced supply of oxygen to the cells and tissues in this population. But there is one benefit of sickle cell trait or the sickle cell anemia over the regular or normal RBC. The sickle cell RBC is resistant to malarial parasite so keep this point in mind it is resistant to the malarial parasite so as a result the chances of malaria in the african population reduces those who are suffering from the sickle cell trait or the sickle cell anemia now this is the genetic coding that is taking place in the sickle cell individual. Now, 
the first diagram represent a normal RBC cell where the sixth the entire problem starts with sixth amino acid of beta globin chain in a normal RBC the sixth amino acid is glutamic acid now glutamic acid is a negative amino acid since it's a negative amino acid it can form electrostatic force of attraction with a positive amino acid and as a result it leads to proper folding of beta globin chain in case of so here the gene responsible the allele responsible for this form is hba when the allele becomes hbs there is a mutation taking place this is a point mutation what is a point mutation a single change in the base of a dna and this type of single base is actually a kind of base substitution the base substitution are of two types transition and transversion transition is change in base from purine to purine or pyrimidines to pyrimidines in transversion in transversion the change is from purines to pyrimidines or pyrimidines to purines so here in sickle cell anemia the hbs allele which is formed is a result of transversion mutation here in the normal chain we have ctc which get changed to cac so t get changed to a as a result in the abnormal rbc or the sickle cell rbc a abnormal rbc or sickle cell rbc in the beta globin chain at sixth position the amino acid is replaced as valine now this valine is a neutral amino acid and hence it is unable to form the electrostatic force of attraction with the positive amino acid because of which the beta globin chain do not get folded properly since the beta globin chain is not folded properly the rbc cells become elongated such an rbc cells loses their property of contraction and relaxation and as a result when they come in contact with small blood capillaries they break as they break the number of rbc in the blood circulation decreases leading to the characteristic symptoms that is anemia so why sickle cell anemia is an example of pleiotropy is an example of pleiotropy so here if we talk about the single allele hbs it is causing mutation in beta globin chain so this is the first characteristic of it affects second it affects the structure of rbc the rbc cells becomes elongated and sickle shaped third it affects the 
elasticity of RBC cells and fourth it causes anemia. This kind of anemia happens due to the breakdown of RBC. Hence, it is also called as hemolytic anemia. So, see here a single allele HBS is responsible for causing change in various characteristics. Due to this reason, it is a classical example of pleiotropy. Like sickle cell anemia, we have another autosomal recessive disorder. The another autosomal recessive disorder is PKU. We call it as phenyl ketonuria. So phenyl ketonuria here the genes are present on chromosome number 12 and it is a metabolic disorder of amino acid metabolism. Now, the entire problem arises in phenylketonuria is due to the absence of enzyme PAH. PAH stands for phenylalanine hydroxylase. Now, what is the importance of this enzyme in our body? This is the structure of phenylalanine. Phenylalanine is an essential amino acid that means it cannot be formed in our body. This phenylalanine under normal condition that means in the presence of dominant genes or the dominant allele, it produces an enzyme that is phenylalanine hydroxylase. This enzyme converts phenylalanine into another amino acid that is tyrosine. So this is the change. This amino acid is said to be tyrosine. So tyrosine since it's formed in our body it is a non-essential amino acid. Now what is the function of tyrosine? Derivatives of tyrosine epinephrine what we also call it as adrenaline which is the stress hormone or the or fight or flight hormone then we have norepinephrine which is also responsible for maintenance of the normal state of our body we have melanin which produces skin coloration or pigmentation and we have dopa which can get which can be aminated to form dopamine which is a neurotransmitter so also it forms the most important hormone that is thyroxine which is the metabolic hormone of our body it helps in maintenance of the metabolic rate in our body so if tyrosine is not formed if this tyrosine is not formed in our body 
all these hormones will be deficit and hence we need to provide tyrosine through food. Now, in case of recessive allele, the enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase is not formed. Since phenylalanine hydroxylase is not formed, phenylalanine cannot be converted to tyrosine. And as a result, this phenylalanine start getting accumulated in our CNS. Due to the accumulation of phenylalanine in the central nervous system, it, let, it leads to mental retardation. Also, a small amount of phenylalanine get converted into its ketone derivative by release of amine group. So it gets converted into its ketone derivative This is called as phenyl pyruvate or phenyl pyruvic acid. This is ketone derivative of phenylalanine. Now, because of this reason, because of the formation of phenyl pyruvate, this phenyl pyruvate cannot be stored in our body and hence it is released out through urine. Since it is released out through the urine, it gives the name to our disorder. Phenyl ketone urea. So break into two parts. Phenyl ketone is our this molecule. Urea means urine. Release of phenyl ketone derivative in urine gives the term phenyl ketone urea. So this is again one of the metabolic disorders that arises as a result of recessive mutations or the recessiveness arising in a normal allele.